everybody, John here with Hickory Forge. Welcome back to part two of the Forge build. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out. Basically, this is where we left off. We got our tank just about prepped, ready to go. So next thing we're gonna do is make some legs. I got some uh, some eighth inch flat bar. I'm gonna make those out of. That's gonna give me plenty of support. And I figured out I want the legs 10 inches wide and I want the forge to sit up about three inches off the ground. So I've got this piece marked out at 17 inches. The reason it's 17 and not 16 is because you're gonna lose a little bit of length when you bend these around. So uh, we'll get this guy cut up and get started. So I'm gonna use a stroke tool called the cold cut to get these legs cut to length just because it's faster. And also I think it's kind of cool. Back before power tools were commonplace, these are what was used. The steel is extremely hard and it's got a very, very stout edge profile to uh, allow it to cut through soft steel. So here we got our flat bar ready to go. We're just gonna cut it to length, find our line. And with just a few blows, we were able to cut through that piece of eighth inch flat bar. So I just think that's kind of cool. To get these legs shaped, I'm just going to stick them in the vise and bend it cold. There's, it's thin steel, so it's easy to do by hand. Stick it in there, grab it, get to the angle you want it. Let's do our other end. If it's off center, you can just clamp one end in, give a little twist. There you go. That's one forge leg ready to go. It's a little bigger on that side, but that'll fix that on the grinder. It'll take one second. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how much work can actually be done without heat if you have the proper equipment. So back here in the workshop, I got the welder going. I've got the uh, forge body set up on the legs where I want it. I'm gonna run some quick tacks to get the legs on there and then I'll turn it over and run some good beads on there. So let's get that done. It shouldn't go anywhere now, so let's turn this baby over. The old railroad track anvil. There we go. She's rock solid now. I'm a much better blacksmith than I am a welder, but I can get the job done if need be. So next thing we gotta do is get the burner, burner ports for this baby made. All right, next thing we gotta make is the burner ports. They're gonna sit up here on top of the forge that are gonna allow you to mount your burner assembly. So I got a piece of inch and a half, or maybe two inch, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's inch and a half. Schedule 40 pipe marked off at inch and a half increments. We're gonna chuck this guy up in the chop saw and cut those off. There we go. All right, next thing we gotta do is drill and tap some holes in here. I'm gonna use the post drill just for fun. So I've got a number seven drill bit chucked up in here. The uh, actual measurement of this is 13 64ths. It goes with a number seven tap. So that's what we're gonna use. I'll talk more about drilling and tapping whenever we actually get to that point. Get this guy ready to go. Nice and slow. Go. 
So there we go. I'll spare you the pain of actually sitting here watching me drill all three holes. Alrighty, so we got the holes drilled in our burner ports. I did not go off camera and use the electric drill press. That is that is zero percent what I did. Anyway, so we're using these quarter inch by 20 by one inch stainless steel bolts to hold our burner steady. So we got a number seven quarter inch by 20 tap in here. You really do need to have the proper drill bit. That's why I brought up the exact measurements of the drill bit to go with your tap. Otherwise, you're not gonna end up getting a good clean hole with good threads on it. So if you've never drilled and tap before, it's pretty simple. You just stick this baby in here and start to turn it. And this will cut the threads onto the inside of the hole. And you just wanna go slow. If you go too fast, you'll strip it out and it won't be any good. So just go nice and slow. I turn it back every now and then to clean the threads out. And once it'll spin freely, you've got the inside of your hole threaded. And again, be careful removing that so you don't strip out your threads and your bolt should go right in. So, see what we're driving at? This is just kind of a close up of the finished project so you see the idea of what's gonna be holding the burners in the forge steady. So, there you go. So, next thing we gotta get the holes for the burner ports drilled in. I'm using an inch and three quarter hole saw to do this. It's a bit tricky to drill through something round with a hole saw, but it's definitely doable if you just go slow and pay attention to what you're doing. So, best way i found is to sit on something and hold this baby between your feet. I'm sitting on my trusty sanding stool, which consists of two anvils. So, let's get this guy set up. I've already got a pilot hole drilled. So. So, like I said, it's a bit tricky to do with a hole saw, but it's definitely possible. There's volume two of John attempting to weld. We're gonna get these burner ports put on here. They're on there, I want them, so now I'll just run some beads all the way around. All right, there's our burner ports. They're not pretty welds by any means, but I think they'll do the job for holding up the less than one pound of the burner assembly. Next thing is, let's get a coat of paint on this bad boy. To paint this thing, I'm using this uh, Rust-Oleum high heat spray paint. It's rated for up to 1200 degrees, which is more than enough. If the outside of your forge is getting to 1200 degrees, then the paint coming off is probably the least of your worries. So, this guy covered up. So here's what we got. Burner ports welded on. Bolts are working good. I went ahead and put two coats of paint on it. I got the burner assembly up next to it ready to go. But uh, that's going to do it for part two of this video just to keep them short. So I'll do another video installing the insulation and firing the refractory and everything. But uh, yeah, she's starting to look like something. So if you like what you saw, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.